The only thing I like more than checking out new technology is sharing that experience with a friend. Today, Michael Fisher and I check out the new 2018 S-Class, which comes packed with the most advanced self-driving technology of any Mercedes on the road. We take a peek behind the curtain on how a self-driving car learns to drive. You just had your first autonomous drive. Yeah. 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 I was yeah. driving to the convention center on day one, and I saw a self-driving, one of the, another self-driving vehicle, and the most I got of it was three seconds on my Pixel out the window, and then it was gone, and I thought that was the end. But no, I got to ride in one. And the Mercedes guys put on a really good show for us for really explaining what was going on. I've I've been on several autonomous drive trips, and I've never seen the data presented like this. Really? As you're driving down the road and there are pedestrians or there are other objects and in, in a crosswalk, down the road, whatever range we're talking about, not only can you see those objects on the radar, and you know, it's not just radar, it's a bunch of other sensors working together, but you can see those objects on the screen and a line indicating how the computer is interpreting its intended point of movement. So you at one point hopped out of the car <laughs> and started doing uh, sprints. Yeah, I was running. I was just running back and forth in front of the car. And you could watch it on the screen. It's not just a dot moving back and forth. It's your actual vector, like your your you, the direction you are facing, as interpreted by the computer, which is checked what was something like ten times a second. We learned that you get six gigs of data for every thirty seconds recorded. That data logger in the trunk. Yeah. That was so big. Right. <laughs> so, and that, that was one of the one of the things that stuck in my mind as well was that this the code and hardware required to have a car drive itself. You know, I know that that's kind of a hinky terminology, yeah. thing, but to have a car get close to driving itself, it's very very elaborate, but it is not as elaborate as the system you need to record all of the data you need to make that self-driving system work better. And you're talking like cameras to observe the driver, the human driver, yeah. for human behaviors. Human behaviors. There's cameras looking forward through the windshield, obviously. And then the cameras on the side, the camera on the rear, right. and then the radar on the front, and, yeah. then, and then the normal sensors around the car. It's, this was such a fun learning trip. Uh, I did not know that the radar was so good at interpreting multipath, I guess, where like you can... It, it can see objects that you cannot see with your eye because it's bouncing off whatever's, you know, if there's a two parked cars along the side of the road and somebody's in between them and you can't see them yet, it, the system still can interpret them and be like, oh, I need to watch out for a pop-out person here and get ready to, you know, auto brake. But then when they told us how when he parked the car in front of their, like they, they had a room where they were kind of like staging us and like everyone's in meetings. And when he pulled the car up to kind of the window, or the the building. Oh yeah. The radar saw through the wall. Right, because and, it was like a wooden building. It was like a like wood because there was like wood in the building and glass and like some yeah, metal and stuff. It was like permeable. It's like, and so right. you, he could see the people inside the building Which moving was, around. That was uh, that was a profoundly weird moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was like, because what? yeah, like when like that's when a lot of data. that's and to go through a building. As well, mm -hmm. I just didn't really think about that. Yeah. Like cars on the side of the road, pedestrians popping out. Sure, that's a natural driving thing. Right, but that uh, that also informed how like I was surprised that the radar could see the little. What do you call the bumps on the road? Oh, the they, Billy Billy Bob's. I think they they gave them a name that like ben, supposedly yeah. us from North America would know, and we were yeah, like, like we were like, oh yeah. sure. Oh yeah, the, the Bob's big boys on the road. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like so, they like are, they're like little the reflectors. little reflectors on the road, yeah. Um, and the system can see those even though they're super tiny. And, but the fact that the radar can see those tiny little things that are maybe an inch or less uh, above the surface of the road sometimes, and they're busted, that was a lot less surprising to me after they told me that it's actually you know, uh, X-ray vision, X-ray vision, <laughs> superpower. <laughs> yeah, right. Are we? Should we? Can we talk about the other thing? The We're crazy magic trick they showed us. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> it's so late, I almost forgot. I know, same. I'm very <laughs> tired. Um, so the, 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 at the very end of the briefing, we're all getting ready to go. They're like, let's show you one more thing here. An exclusive story. <laughs> and we're sitting there like, okay, whatever. And what's going to happen here? The rocket's going to deploy? The, you know, the, the, the spring tires? Gonna... And pull it back, what, about uh, 30 feet from the, yeah. from the white fence? 
And then a light show started. Like a really cool light show. Suddenly we're watching animated, double animated frames on the fence. Coming out of the, the headlights. Being shot out from the headlights because they're actually projectors. That is, and I was like, well, what's the practical applications of having your headlights be projectors? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, this is a really cool soundtrack you're playing now, and I'm really enjoying the light show, but... but... <laughs> and I was, this is where I come out as a noob, right? Because mm-hmm. I was bowled over to learn that headlights are now smart enough to intelligently... Communicate with you. Oh, well, well that. Yeah. But first, like... You, you want your high beams on all the time as the driver, right? But it blinds everyone else, so that sucks. So the he- you want a headlight that will illuminate everything, but specifically the area of the car in front of it with, with, with the driver's face, right? Right. Or like a, a pedestrian, like illuminate the entire body from the neck down, though, only. And you do that with a, with a head- headlight that's a projector. That blew my mind and yeah. I almost fell over. Right, so this is the first time that I've seen this demo because usually the concept cars come out with like a beautiful panel across the front where it says, stop, right. or I see you, or like, yeah, so you know, it's it like... communicates with you through the... Like, like through actual LEDs yeah, and like a light pattern. On the car itself. On the car itself, but, because projectors won't work during the day. Right. Oh, but this is so that's the first, first time that I saw a pedestrian walkway get thrown down and to indicate to the pedestrian that the car sees yeah. you walking and is saying, walk on this pedestrian way because I see you. That, that's, that's the first the time I saw that. the and most elegant thing, implementation of that idea yeah. of communicating with the outside world when you are a car that doesn't have a face so people can't read its intention. I mean, I, there's so many things I hadn't thought about before. No, it, was, it, was, uh, it was a very, very cool experience kind of sitting inside the mind of this car as it, as it, as it learned and gathered data and gathered data about the road and, and other things on the road and then the people inside the car and, you know. And carried I was, along. Yeah. I was surprised at how nonchalant everyone was about it. It's like, yeah, this is what it's, here's another half minute, another six gigs of data. <laughs> <laughs> so the next time you get into a car, are you going to be able to feel satisfied riding it? It's a, it's a mean question. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, because it, it is funny. It was nice to have the this panel right in front of me that showed me everything the car was doing. And of course, the production cars won't have that because you won't need it, right? This is all engineering test work. But um, knowing that all of that work is not being is not going into the next car I go to sit in, whatever it happens to be. Yeah, no, I think I'll be a little be a little let down, be a little eager for the future. Which, with Mercedes, for you would probably be the next EQ because EQC. you do like yeah. you you do like. I like my EVs. You like lady. your EVs. You, you come like, down you like, for I mean, it's you not like, that it's not that I don't come like down, EVs. Future boy. I, yeah. I'm on board, okay. but it's just I get more excited about this autonomous stuff, right? And and you know no you're right and now actually I do too because I know you had to sell me on it. I was like, well, it's not in an EV, so it's not really my thing. But no, this is totally it, the. It's, the power plant is sort of irrelevant when you want to talk about this stuff because, honestly... And it, it could be in any car. It just happens yeah. to be that, for now, they're only coming out on the high-end luxury where they can justify the spend because this, this is expensive stuff. Yeah. And to add that to the cost of the EV, which is already a little bit high with the battery, mm-hmm. right? So, like, the two just aren't going together right now. Sure. And, you know, and eventually, who knows? It doesn't matter, right? It, 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 we can get to a future where they're all powered by dilithium, and that's, that's fine, too. But like, the, the watching a car watching a car learn how to interact with other things in its environment without hurting them, and get you safely from one place to another is just as interesting Pretty to me cool. as talking about batteries <laughs> and motors. Yeah. All right, so we've converted Michael Fisher to <laughs> loving other cars than just EV. <sighs> yes. <sighs> Yes. A, a, a change moment occurred. <laughs> that tingling now. CES 2018, your first test drive with the S Class from Mercedes Benz. Thank you. Now you like gas cars too. Hey, you know, let's not <laughs> let's not go so far. There. <laughs> All right, we have to go eat. We're starving, and it's yeah. like midnight. And also sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and also sleeping. <laughs> CES. CES 2018. Thanks for watching. Oh, Michael Fisher, Mr. Mobile. Mr. Mobile. Click on his channel somewhere here. Subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe here. He's dressed better than I am.